Hey guys, Tepco Cycle Repair. I'm excited. We're about to get this thing sprayed. So I want to show you guys real quickly um, what this stuff costs because when you go to ask to get your uh, tank sprayed at a body shop, I don't want you to panic when they tell you it's going to be like 400 bucks. Okay. So this stuff right here, I have the um, reducer. This is the um, the uh, clear for the top. We have our uh, have black here, and then I have the color that I'm going. This is the uh, dark cherry. I had the five, the R529P, and this is a half a pint and a half a pint. And then I also have the sealer I'm going to be using here. I have the hardener, I'm using medium top coat hardener. And then I have, uh, I just got a new water separator for the gun, this disposable one. And I got a uh, some new 3M tape. I got just a couple um, new, new, just new pieces, uh, rolls of tape right here, just to, because my other stuff was uh, a little bit old. And uh, that's all I got right there. And that was right there was uh, just over $200. About two oh five. Okay, this stuff's expensive, so don't jump on the body guy when he tells you how much it is. It's, this this is just something you have to. But you want good stuff and you want good paint, you got to get the right product. These are all PPG products. All right, the gun I'm going to be using today is the uh, Awada VX nine twenty nine. This gun's been good to me for a really long time, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, tank is ready to go. It's on the uh, the little rotator right here, so I'm able to just turn it as I need it. So I'm going to wipe this thing down with some prep saw. Get it all clean, ready to go, and I'm going to shoot sealer on it, and we're going to let that set up, and we'll start doing the base coats. Guys, I'm excited. Let's get this started. This is just a degreaser. This is a PPG DX220. All right, this is a four to one mix. So we got four to one there. Make sure you pour your stuff through the strainer before you put it in. I do everything, mix it in the cup and then go through the strainer. So let's get this uh, ready to spray. All right, looks good. Um, I got 15 minutes of dry time, flash time between this. I'm going to keep the fan running. Uh, this is a heated shop, so um, I, you saw I got a little speck in there. I don't know, something fell off of somewhere, I don't know, and got on there. Oh, well, it's what you get for working in a shop like this, but um, I'm going to let this dry and set up. I'm going to give it a good 20 minutes just to be sure. 25 minutes, 30 minutes is all good. So let's say 30 minutes, and then I'll come back and we'll start shooting the base coat.
All right, guys, it's been 50 minutes right now. Um, you can see that it's dry, no problem. Um, what I'm going to do now is just tack rag it really quick and run a tape line to cut off the bottom part because I want that to be to remain black. All right, so I'm going to do the same for the other side. It's coming together. All right, guys, it's ready to go. I'm going to blow it and tack rag it off and get it ready. Um, the color that I'm using is a Honda color. It was one of the hardest things I had to do was pick the color for this bike. Um, my wife's a color analysis, and she says this has some warm tones in it, so it that helps it kind of look like more of a classic color than with some of these other brighter colors. So it should look really good. Let me get this thing blown off, tack rag on, start putting some coats down. All right, let me give you some flash time before the next coat. All right, guys, so I got the two colors on. I'm just letting everything set up so I can pull that pin stripe tape off of there and get a nice clean line. Uh, so I'm just going to give that a second to try to let that set all up. Probably a good 20 minutes before I do that, and, uh, and then I'll pull that off and start clearing it. But it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. This color is going to look amazing under clear. All right, let me just hang out and wait. All right, guys, so I'm about to put the clear on. I'm going to dump on three coats on this thing because I want to make sure I got plenty of clear on there to take care of any dirt nibs or anything and also to bury that stripe. So uh, I'm going to dump on three coats right now, uh, you know, 10 minutes in between each coat and make sure everything hardens in there real well. And uh, let's get it done. This is the last thing I got to do. It's pushing midnight. All right, so right here I noticed that uh, this is a gravity feed gun. It's not an HVLP gun. So I got the pressure too low and it's dumping on too much material. You can see because it's just, it lays it on really thick. So 
Um, I adjust the uh, air pressure right here to boost it up some so the second side lays out better. And then the uh, coats following this, I boost the pressure up to fix it so it lays out smoother. All right, guys, last coat, here we go. Not bad. A couple of dirt nibs, that's about it. Look at that color. It's going to be awesome in the sun. All right, guys, so it's been about three days. Now I'm going to start wet sanding it. I want to show you what I use for uh, dirt nibs. You're going to get them if you spray it in a shop like this. Um, I'm using a uh, Steck 35250. And basically, this is a little tiny file. And you take this here and uh, you find your dirt nibs. Let's say, let's shoot for this one right here. All right. And you just take it and you shave it down. And all you're doing is trying to get the high spot down so that, uh, you know, you, ha you don't have to wet sand it as much. If you, if you just leave it like that and try to wet sand it, you're going to, it's kind of going to wet sand a little circle around it because your paper is going to be hitting the top of it. And then around it and right next to it is not going to be hitting it at all. So you want to try to get those little dirt nibs down. And uh, here's another one right there. See it? And I'm going to be hitting this with a thousand grit sandpaper wet, and then two thousand grit wet, and then I'll buff it out. But I'll get all these out of here. Okay. Let me just give you a rundown here now before, and then I'll show you after. And just to show you guys what I'm doing, we're trying to get rid of all that peel, any little dirt nibs. So right here you can see where this is nice and smooth now, and you can still see the orange peel. Let me bring it down here. See that right there? So we're trying to get all that orange peel. It's sanding real easy. Here you can see a dirt nib. I just started. It's only just uh, maybe five seconds of pass, and I really just touched it. So I'm going to scuff that, and you want all these to get flat. But you see what I'm saying? If you don't cut that center down a little bit, it's going to sand like that, and you'll have a little ring there. Okay, so here's a dirt nib we shaved down right there. And that's going to have no problem. So this is 2,000 grit. I mean, this is 1,000 grit, and it's cutting super easy. No problems here. Flat like slate, no shiny spots. Going for glass. Glass, baby! There we go. Now we're getting there. Mm. Alright guys, so I got to cut down with a thousand grit and then two thousand grit. See, it's nice and smooth here. If I had three or four thousand, I would hit it with that, but I just the shop didn't have any. So, um, what I'm using now is a little perfected. This is the um, extra cut, and I'm using a, a foam pad. If I was able to cut it down a little more, I wouldn't have to use that, but that's what I got, and it's it's coming right up. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sit the side right here. All right, and then we're just gonna. Low RPM, keep it moving, 
Remember when you're buffing, always run your buffer off of any edges, not into the edges, so it doesn't cut into it. You can see how it's shining up there, it's shining up really easy with that pad. You just gotta be gentle with it, don't press onto it, just the weight of the buffer. And I'm just kind of moving along here, I'm gonna do the whole thing with that, and then I'm gonna follow up, I'm gonna clean that pad, and I'm gonna use some uh, finesse it on top of that. So let me get to uh, polishing up the whole thing now with this extra cut. All right guys, so after that extra coat, I cut it with this uh, 3M finesse it, that was also with the foam pad. And now I'm cutting it with, uh, I'm sorry, that was with the uh, wool pad, and now I'm using a foam pad, an ultra fine foam pad with uh, perfected uh, foam polishing. This is the old stuff, the glaze for um, dark colors. And that's uh, part number 05996. It's looking good. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. I used the foam pad and the uh, polish, and now I'm gonna hit it with some hand glaze. We're coming along. It's just some dust on there. Here we go. All right, guys, so here it is all done with the hand glaze after the machine glaze. And we're looking sharp. It looks smooth. No more dirt nibs or anything in it. This clear, it sanded up really nice and buffed out really good. Let's get that. There we go. I mean, look at that. That's amazing. It's looking real, real good. So I'm going to take this thing out to the sun for you guys. It's not sunny out today, so we might have to wait a day for that. But you can kind of see the metallics in there. If I can get it. There you go. If I get it just right. But this thing really lights up in the sun. So this color, this is a nice color. So, uh. Let me get that for you and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, so there you go. That's all there is to it. This is the way that I did it. You may do it a different way, but uh, those are the steps that I used. I'm an old school body guy. I haven't done it in a long time. So, uh, you know, just there's a lot of new ways out there, and I, I encourage you to look up things and learn the new ways of doing body work. But, you know, you do it enough, you can get results like this. It really wasn't too bad. Hopefully, guys, this helps you out and you enjoyed the uh, transformation of this banged up old, you know, crappy tank to what it is now. And uh, I will see you on the next one, guys. Please do me a favor and hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for further notifications. Until next time, this is Tepco Psych Repair.